Radio Network, broadcasting from the Lucas Oil Studios, driven by General Tire. It's Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent. We love to party. Crash Gladys. What are we doing for the bachelorette party? And Statman. I am serious. Here's the Freaks. It is a rock and roll show, and it's 2023. It's our first live show, Freak Nation, from the Lucas Oil Studios. Uh, did we fool you the last three or four, four weeks with our fantastic editing? And uh, well, hold on, what's that? Last Crasher? week we had 45 minutes of live as we gave ah, a Ken Block tribute. There you go. So aside from that, the rest of the show was in the can. But- okay. Well, happy 2023, Freak Nation. Statman, Crash Gladys, Kenny Sargent, Richard C. Suave. We're all here. If you're watching us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live, how are you doing? And I'm looking at the camera. Now I am. How are you doing, Freak Nation? For those of you listening to many of our affiliates across the country, thank you guys for being a part of this big old thing. Coming up in the show, Frankie Munez, Malcolm in the Middle, drummer, golfer, house flipper, he made some news the last, what, 10 days? When was the announcement crash? Yeah, well, high like this. people have, yeah, nice voice, by mm-hmm. the way. He's, he's still got dirt in your lungs from Tulsa and the Chili Bowl? Negative. Yeah, okay. He, he's he been racing. He's He got back into racing, I should say. Yeah, over we don't this need a whole last, diatribe. Obviously. Okay, okay, but hold on. You want yeah. to know how long this news has been? He's been making news on Twitter with his yeah. new Moon is Racing logo since, what, November, December? So it's not like this was shocking news in the last four days. We saw this coming. We knew this was coming. He was tweeting about it before and after Christmas, but it became official this past week. Got it. Bam. Okay. So stat man, Frankie Munez. And, <laughs> and as we know, when he joins us here in the Freak Nation, there will be three or four different iterations of his last name that all of us decide to drop in the Freak Nation. Even he has some different iterations. If you ask him four times, you're liable to get five different uh, responses. Yeah, yeah, that's valid. Frankie Munez will be joining us here in the Freak Nation coming up in about 13, 14 minutes. Also in the show, your Chili Bowl winner. 37th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl went off last night or this morning, depending on where you were, Mm. Freak Nation. And Logan Seavey, all the way from California by way of Indiana, he won his first Chili Bowl, and he'll be joining us coming up in the second hour here in the Freak Nation. Richard C. Suave, happy 2023 to you. Before we go any further, Richie, the millennials take on how long do we say happy new year to folks? Oh. Yep. Okay, go, go ahead. 12.05 a.m. on January 1st. Ugh. And that's it. Oh, so man. guess who was just asking that on Twitter this weekend? IndyCar driver Scott McLaughlin. Hey. He said, I really want to know, or he said, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. I really want to know, when do I stop my emails from saying Happy New Year at the beginning of my emails? So, Kenny, clearly you're on to something, but I'm with Richie. The closer to midnight on January 1st, the better. Look, I sent out two emails today on a Sunday afternoon, and both of them started with Happy New Year. (laughs) 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 <laughs> today what is today yeah, the 15th? I mean, look i don't know about you stat man but last week uh it just we it was a tough time getting going it yeah for yeah. many reasons <laughs> for many reasons but yes I mean, stat man living on the stat man island it's always a vacation for you stat man you're always in the middle of it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i had my week was very strange. I stayed in one hotel room that looked like Ikea threw up in the place. Uh, oh. It was a uh, very nice one. A very different kind of hotel room. And the people didn't even, when I checked out, they didn't even give me a bill. They said, we already sent it to you. And I, you know, I don't understand people that take money from you and don't want to give you a receipt. That doesn't make sense anymore. Go ahead, millennial. Drop it on uh, the stat, man. What's what's going on here? Everything's right. gone digital. Everything's gone digital. No, no more papers whatsoever. And also, speaking of hotels, usually the case is I've said this on the show before. I don't want to talk to anybody, so I don't want to have to go through the effort of going back to the front desk and turning in my key. It's literally just I get to walk out with it, and I'll take the keys with me. See you later. Don't talk to anybody. And get out as quick as possible. 
that's why the world okay. loves millennials. You know, I mean, just an unmitigated love for millennials. I didn't see a whole. Well, you know what? Frankly, I, I did see. And they were mostly crew members because I wasn't up in the stands. I saw a number of young people at Tulsa, Oklahoma yesterday and the day before and the day before for the 37th annual Chili Bowl. And a lot of it has to do with generations of families that have been coming up, again, for generations of running on dirt tracks across the country, specifically sprint cars. And these are midget sprint, sprint cars, one of the smaller midget cars. midget cars, one of the smaller versions of sprint cars. You have, uh, yeah, I don't need to get into the, the small, but it was cool to see, again, a group of people out there, stat man, that don't need a damn receipt to get the hell out of the hotel. Well, I don't need one either, but I want one. I mean, if, if I give you several hundred dollars, then you ought to give me something to indicate that you got it. And as of now, uh, like 30, 40 hours after I checked out of the hotel, the digital receipt suave hasn't been delivered yet. Ooh. Is this a personal thing or has this been like a national topic over the last couple of days? No, is, I mean, it also happened. Head? Another hotel I was in the week before, right after, uh, uh, New Year's Day had the same problem with them, you know. I mean, come on. I got your music stat. Now that sounds like some music from uh, Putin's bedroom. That oh my God. Music that I... <laughs> what? what? God, <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Somehow we we speed freaks just got inside Vladimir Putin's bedroom. What? Yeah, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, that does that's that was uh, that what certainly wasn't anything you heard. Happy New Year to you, too. <laughs> that wasn't something from the loudspeaker at the chili bowl, was it? <laughs> no, no, but there, yes, I blew out some serious slugs this morning from my nose. If we sound weird tonight, it's because of the dirt snot, the the everything. My brain is still infused with chili bowl <laughs> methanol. It's so just... People that are listening to us for the first time, we go from digital receipts to dirt snot, all in, in, in within two sentences, yeah. and including Putin's bedroom. I mean, yep. this this is pure freak. This hasn't been yeah. even been this freakish in a long time. Just what, we have so many topics to talk about tonight too. Things that have happened over the last several weeks, from Formula One to dirt cars. That yeah, it's it's going to get. Very freaky. I don't know what's going to come out of our mouth. Crasher, share with the Freak Nation. We've got about three and a half minutes. Just okay. get just three or four topics that have happened over the last two weeks that we haven't had a time to drop any freakdom. Okay. Well, arguably the most recent one. No, there's okay, they're all going to get jumbled in this. Jimmy Johnson starting Legacy Motor Group. Right. I personally like the name of the team, the team that he and Richard Petty are now together on. Kyle Larson announcing he's going to join the ranks of IndyCar and be a part of the Indy 500 a year and a half from now. Travis Pastrana trying to race into the Daytona 500 this year. That is going to happen next month. Michael Andretti and his oh Andretti Global Group oh, partnering. No, I don't need that music. Oh, you know you that? No, I, I partnering with Cadillac and General Motors and still getting the stink eye from Formula One owners again. Because of oh, that's three. a long conversation. I'm kind of long up there on purpose because if you look at where the releases are coming from, that'll tell you where the money's coming from. True. Who's interested? And the releases aren't coming from Detroit. They're coming coming from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. There you go. However, the what's the, I'm the venture group, the venture capital group that is behind this with Andretti Global has millions upon hundreds of millions of dollars. So I don't know if that necessarily is a Nazareth <laughs> company. I mean, they have it doesn't mean they're willing to spend it. Look, read the releases. If Cadillac wanted to have a team in F1, they'd go buy one and it would be Cadillac Andretti. It wouldn't be Andretti Cadillac. Okay, but buying one is part of the issue here because 10 teams on the grid, 
the 11th would dilute, this is all allegedly, dilute the prize money from those 10 very wealthy teams. How dare anybody get into their if they're buy one that already exists, there would still be 10 teams there. Uh, that, right. that this is this is at the core of the issue. Cadillac right. wanted to do it. They already have global branding. And the thing we can never forget about any automaker is that their business is bought selling cars. It's not winning races. And Cadillac already has a global brand with Corvette and putting Cadillac into the mix. I, I just don't see this as being a viable thing. Richie, if it Richie, was so start easy, the music. Please hold on. Start if it was music. so easy to start or to buy a team, why didn't Cadillac already buy Sauber? Because that's okay, apparently good for sale. Apparently, yeah, they're interested in doing it. That's that is the key to the whole thing. See there, Freak Nation. I, I wanted to hit three or four topics, and we dove right into Formula One and we GMC need to get into pickup that. trucks becoming part of Formula One we with Cadillac. GMC pickup trucks. No. 57 Caddies, big wings, pink Cadillacs rolling down Abu Dhabi. How we roll here in the Freak Nation? Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Dirt's not from Tulsa and uh -huh. from Vlad Vladimir Putin's bedroom. I'm telling you, man. Hey, Freak Nation, coming up next, Frankie Munez, Malcolm in the middle, former, dr former drummer, Mm -hmm. Golfer and house flipper, yeah. Frankie Munez, coming up here. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. It's more than just a slogan. General Tire delivers for whatever you do. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3. General Tire delivers for whatever you do. Check out GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressively styling the speed freaks since 2001. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab us some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you gotta share. Awesome! Lucas works! It's edgy and downright offensive at times. So he wins my What an Idiot for the month of July. See the world of NASCAR through their eyes. Hey, it's TJ, Brett, and Freddie. Superstar guests and plenty of hot takes. And we are door bumper clear. NASCAR hits Mab TV with door bumper clear. Only on Mab TV, Motorsports Network. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Brought in part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Soul, it works. I run Luffy Soil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. You are listening to Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio Redefined.
Freak Nation, as I promised, Frankie Munez joining us here in the Freak Nation. And Frankie, we have a history uh, here with the Speed Freaks. Not, I mean, we're, we're Malcolm in the Middle fans, fan of your acting, your music, and of course, some of your voice work. But if you look back at the history of Speed Freaks, do you have any idea how old you were the first time you came on Speed Freaks? I don't know the first time. I do remember um, us being at Long Beach my first year in Atlantic and getting interviewed. So I don't know if that was my first time. But that was what, 2007? You were six? Yes, you were 21 years old. And look at these two sexy bastards right here. Frankie Munez in the Speed Freaks pits, Malcolm in the middle fame. But now, the only, from what you say, the only actor turned racer full time that you know of, right? Yeah, you know, I know a lot of uh, actors have wanted to become race car drivers and have gotten involved in racing as a hobby. But uh, this is uh, this is my career now. This is it for me. But no, you know, I really didn't know what the first step was, and the show ended last year, and it all kind of happened. And here I am in Atlantic, 13 months after starting racing, which is, I think, uh, is a pretty good a pretty good deal. Yeah, you yeah, think 13 months and then in the seat full time. Wow. I just, I, I, my memory of that is I, my knees didn't hurt nearly as bad as they do now. Um, when I see that video, you know, my back hurts, my knees hurt, you know, those are the good old days. Well, it's taken me 16 years to learn how to pronounce your name. Right. I look, I'm 37 years old. I still don't know how to pronounce my name. Right. So today I'll say it's Frankie Muniz. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. Okay, we'll go with Muniz today. Okay. Well, All right. My my grandpa, you know, uh, I'm actually half Puerto Rican, and my grandpa gets so mad at me because it's like it's really Muniz, Muniz, Francisco Muniz, and I'm like, I don't know, I, like maybe my mom couldn't say it right, you know what I mean? She's like Italian Irish, and uh, we became Muniz. I don't know, so that's what it is. Today. So hold on though, has your mom ever called you Francisco when she's mad at you? Uh, no, never. You know, to be honest, she told me that she's mad. I mean. I'm the fourth, actually. So I'm Francisco Muniz the fourth. Oh, okay. So uh, she's like, I didn't really want to name you Francisco, but I felt obligated to. Her maiden name is Pirelli. So she wanted me to be oh. Tony Pirelli. So I'm happy that that's <laughs> going <laughs> But I'm going to be Muniz in the end. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told anyone that. <laughs> well, we spent a good five minutes learning how to pronounce your name and talking about what happened 21 years ago. All right, uh, Frank, <laughs> Frank Muniz. <laughs> joining us here in the Freak Nation again, uh, running for the ARCA series. Uh, looking at the the team that you're running for, Frankie, the, the Rhett Jones Racing, they have a history in racing, in particular the trucks and the ARCA series. Walk us through this. Who contacted who? Why did you want to get back in the seat? Because as you saw in that little clip, you want to be a big-time race car driver. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was 2007, the interview that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I, I raced – from 2006 to 2009, I got pretty badly hurt at uh, the end of the 2009 season in Atlantic. Always thought I'd go back racing. Like, that's where my head has been. But kind of life, other things happened. I took longer to heal. Um, I started playing drums in a band, started doing other things. And I can't believe 12 years had passed, 13 years had passed since I'd raced. And it hit me that I'm not getting any younger. And if I want to do this and I want to – reach that goal or reach that dream or be the best driver I can be, I need to do it now. So to be honest, about a year ago, when I made the decision to go back racing, I was like, I don't really know anyone in the stock car world. You know, if, if I was going back open wheel racing, I still have a lot of friends that are there. A lot of the team owners I know and all that, but you know, the stock car world, it's a whole different, a different beast, but I had done a small event with uh, a guy who owns, Ir a guy who owns Irwindale Speedway. His name is Tim Huddleston. And he has a late model team and an Arca West team. I was like, hey, like, what can I do? And so he put me in a bunch of late model races. Uh, I showed a bunch of speed and caught the bug again. And and it's been my goal from that moment forward to get into the Arca, Arca series. That said, when it comes to racing, there's so many factors that have to be aligned. You know, so many things that have to be aligned perfectly. You need sponsorship money. You need the team, the timing. Like, you know, everything has to come together. And we were always kind of missing one piece. And I met with a lot of teams. I met with and talked with a, a bunch of teams uh, in ARCA and trucks, uh, some Xfinity teams, even though I always knew that was a bit of a, a leap. But uh, just to kind of learn and, and figure out what people thought might be the best path for me. And when I sat down with Mark Rett, I knew immediately that I wanted to sign with them. There was just some connection that he and I had and like he understood what I was trying to achieve. And I felt like he was going to give me the best possibility to, to move forward. Um, 
the way I want to. So uh, signed with him. I have a great relationship with Ford. So that was also, you know, a big part because he's a Ford team. And, uh, you know, and we had our first test this past weekend and it went great. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled with being a part of the team and the decision I made. And I think we're going to have a really, really fun year. Look at your face. Look at your face. You can just see how excited you are. We're talking to Frankie Muniz and his racing career being rejuvenated for 2023. Of course, many of you guys know him as an actor, but my goodness, we've known him as a race car driver, a golfer, a house flipper. I mean, you are a man of many hats. Where Your true passion, I feel like, has always been in motorsports. Where would you say your true passion is, though? What, what would you nail it on? You know, that's part of what made me go back to racing. I'll, I'll back up a little bit. I don't want to, I talk a lot, so forgive me. But <laughs> so I, me. don't worry. <laughs> when my son was born, I have a, 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 seven, a 19, 19 month old. And when he was born, I looked at him and I was like, you know, who, what's, who, who do I want to be for him? Meaning what type of father do I want to be? Like, what is he going to think of me when he's older? Cause obviously I've, I've, I've accomplished so many things in my life and I'm extremely proud of everything I've gotten to do. But at the moment I felt like I was nothing. You know what I mean? Cause all stuff I did in my past, it's all stuff I've done, which is great. But like, I go, what, where do I want to focus? Like, I don't want him to just see me at home doing nothing. Um, and I go, you know what? I love racing. I want to do it. I want, him to grow up seeing me really uh, uh, reach for something that's tough, that's a dream, that's, you know, he's going to see me working hard. And and uh, that's what really kind of motivated me to get back going, um, as odd as that sounds. So, but honestly, after getting back in a race car, even all this past year, everything I've done, when I'm in that seat, when I'm in the car on the track, hmm. I get out and I go, that's what I'm supposed to do. This is what I was made to do and i honestly feel that so i'm uh, i'm so happy I, I i got back and i'm and i'm gonna be in arca this year it's gonna be a blast and and hopefully uh i can surprise some people with uh with our speed yeah you can't you can't fake genuine feelings you can just tell it's in your voice it's in your face this is going to be cool it's going to be an awesome journey for people to follow especially for your son to follow but more important questions here has your wife found an outfit for daytona yet <laughs> You know, it's so funny. You know, I, I was kind of joking when I tweeted that because she hadn't really a asked. But then she goes, wait, I really do need to figure out what I'm going to wear. So she came out the other day and she's like, would this work? And it was like, it was casual, which she's a pretty, she's usually dressed pretty casual. And I was like, no, that's not it. You know, Daytona, it's Daytona. It's the Super Bowl of, <laughs> of racing, you know, of NASCAR. You know, like you've got to, you got to look, you know, amazing because, um, so, uh, she, she's still figuring it out, but she has, she has a better idea of what she's going to do. So we'll see what she goes with. And she's got more than one. She's got your son. She's got a dress too. I mean, especially to keep up with the bushes, Samantha Bush, <laughs> Brexton and all those outfits. Well, I got home from Daytona and she was in the office and she's making shirts. She's making little, uh, Ma's Muniz shirts, Muniz racing shirts and Whoa. with my car number and stuff on it. So, so he'll be all decked out for sure. <laughs> I want one. Can she make one for me? <laughs> you know, I, she is taking orders. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> for sure. That'd be awesome. Wow. Frankie Muniz. That, that's the third way we've pronounced it. It's Kenny yeah. something. No, you're good. You're good. Muniz. 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 Is that right? Is that what it is? Muniz. I, I want to get it this right. Frankie M. Frankie M. Frankie M. Frankie M. All right. Frankie M. <laughs> Malcolm in the middle. That's what everybody knows you as. You ever get tired of that? It's something that's never really bothered me because I've always thought about the fact that if being remembered as anything is a positive, the fact that you can have an impact on so many people's lives and you know, people love that show. So, you know, it's a reminder that I was on something that people really loved and that that feels good. You know, obviously, like already the season hasn't the season hasn't started and i've gotten so many of those oh i can't wait till you're malcolm in the middle three wide at daytona you know but hey Aww. if people tune in to watch that happen you know what i mean that's great for for me it's great for the sport so so awesome and hopefully it'll be me passing in the middle to the front i'll be on the middle step of the podium first place you know that's what i'm going for but that will be in the track in the middle right there so frankie you mentioned ford is ford behind the effort you mentioned sponsorship is ford behind the effort because uh, several careers have gone to ford died yeah <laughs> yeah no <laughs> it, they are they uh you know i, I met with a, a few of the manufacturers you know ford had a really nice game plan for what they they could uh they could offer me to help kind of me reach my goals 
and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be one of their development drivers. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of sim time in, in Charlotte uh, at Ford Performance, which is going to be really helpful for me because everywhere I go this year, I've never been. You know, you know my racing career in the path. I've never raced on an oval until the few late model races I did uh, last year. So uh, I, I've got a, a steep learning curve and they are going to give me all the resources and, and some of their other drivers and the cup guys are coming to help me. And, and I think uh, that's going to be really key to help me learn at an accelerated rate. Again, Frankie Muna is joining us here in the Freak Nation. And Frankie, I knew this thing was going to go long. Can you join us for another segment here in the Lucas Oil Studios? I'd love to, for sure. Bang. Uh, more with actor, ARCA series driver. Okay, ARCA series driver and acting's in the past. Frankie Muna is coming up. <laughs> Lucas Oil. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold-out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. There's a price war in the insurance business, and you may be paying too much. Call the Term Lifeline right now and see if you can save 40%. Half million dollar plans and up, that's our specialty. Even great smokers rates. Protect your family today. Call the Term Lifeline right now for a free quote. 866-549-TERM. 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 General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. MAV TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab us some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you got to share. Awesome! Lucas works. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Brought in part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. It's edgy and downright offensive at times. So he wins my What an Idiot for the month of July. See the world of NASCAR through their eyes. Hey, it's TJ, Brett, and Freddie. Superstar guests and plenty of hot takes. And we are Door Bumper Clear. NASCAR hits Mad TV with Door Bumper Clear. Only on Mad TV, Motorsports Network. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio, redefined. 
Freak Nation, coming up more with uh, Frankie Munez here with Freaks. Also coming up in the next segment, your Statman Scat regarding Travis Pastrana. Dude made some news over the last uh, week. Uh, stay tuned for your Statman Scat, but our good friends at Lucas Oil. Go to lucasoil.com to find the right product to keep your rides fat and happy. Inside your engine, outside your engine, inside your car, outside your car. They have their products to keep that ride looking sweet. Go to Lucas Oil. Dot com. That's lucasoil.com. Actor, race car driver, drummer joining us here. Nope, retired drummer. Retired drummer <laughs> joining us here in the Freak Nation. And Statman brought to our attention that the car you're going to be running, there's a certain history to the chassis mm -hmm. that you're going to be running. Do you care to share that with the Freak Nation? It is it's something that I just found out too, like kind of in the past week. And when I started putting all the pieces together of what it actually means, I actually got pretty emotional. Um, in 2001, I was in the pace car for the Daytona 500. Um, and Sterling Marlin, who drives the number 40 car, he was either on pole or first or second. So he was right behind me in the pace car. So there's actually a video of me uh, in the pace car. And all the only car you see is that number 40 Coors Light Sterling Marlin car. It's CRG 005 is the VIN number, is the, the chassis number. It was a Chip Ganassi racing um, uh, chassis. And that day I was in Kenny Schrader's pit. So he gave me the m ms jacket. And I have three signatures mm -hmm. on that jacket. Mm -hmm. Kenny Schrader, yeah. Sterling Marlin, oh. and Dale Earnhardt. So Dale Earnhardt, um, he came, came up to me um, mm -hmm. at the driver's meeting actually. And he told me, I said to say, you know, I'm a huge fan. Your show has brought, you know, me and my daughter so much closer. And I was 15 at the time. I was like the hugest NASCAR fan. I was in awe that a hero of mine was saying that they were a fan of mine. And then when we were, they were, everyone was climbing in their cars. He stopped me again and, and like shook my hand. And he goes, man, I love your show. I love your show. And he got in the car. So I got in the pace car. We drive around. At the end of the race, I still wearing the M&M jacket. I had Kenny Schrader's uh, crew in my uh, headphones. And the three cars that were really involved in that incident were Sterling Marlin, Kenny Schrader, and of course, Dale Earnhardt. Um, the chassis that I'm driving, that I drove at Daytona this weekend, is Sterling Marlin's car that he raced in 2001 at the 500. And it's a really weird kind of like, at first it kind of, I don't want to say creep me out. It was a little eerie to think about when you put all those pieces together, that, you know, but it made me actually feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in my life. You know what I mean? The, the fact that really one of my first NASCAR experiences, you know, was that, that race in person and that now my first NASCAR ARCA experience as a race car driver is in that same car is pretty I don't know, kind of a crazy story, pretty remarkable to me. So it's incredible. Wow. What that I have not heard the story told like that before. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's uh pretty it, like literally I actually called my mom when I found out because like, I watched a video, I watched a video. Um, and I am not a person who likes to watch videos of crashes, right? But I watched the last couple laps of the 2001 Daytona 500 because I was like, someone had mentioned, like, oh, I can't believe he's driving that car, like, you know, significance it has to the incident. And, I watched and and it it brought me back to that moment that I felt watching the race live and then finding out an hour later that uh, Dale Earnhardt had died. I had never cried that hard in my life. And I ran down. I was we were staying in the Hilton. That's right across the street from Daytona, right in turn four, basically. And I ran down and my mom was in the bar of the rest of the hotel with Humby Wheeler, you know, the, the owner of uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway and a, and a few other track you know, execs and stuff. They were all just hanging out. And I ran down and full bar and I go, Dale Earnhardt died. And it was like the most, I don't know, insane moment of my life. Like to have to deliver the, I didn't have to deliver Ooh. the news, but I did deliver the news to so many people and you could hear a pin drop. And I remember flying out the next day, we were flying out of Daytona 
and the, tr the airport is right behind the track. And as we took off, everybody was silent and everyone was just looking at the track and it was just the most somber um, experience of my life. And it brought me back to that just literally three days before getting into the car um, at Daytona. And I called my mom and I was like, mom, like I kind of told her the story and the tie and I actually started crying. You know what I mean? Because it, I don't know, it was just such a crazy experience and like to be following this path and, and something that I want so bad. And, and like I said, I feel like it is telling me, it's the universe telling me that this is where I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that's the case next month. And uh, the test went really, really well. Um, we, uh, we followed our program and we only ran a, a few laps, but we were ended up being six fastest, I think, which was mm -hmm. top 10, baby. So, so uh, I'll, I'll take it. You know, that chassis is 20, 20, what, 22 years old. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. Its oh. knees aren't hurting. Its so, back isn't hurting. Yeah. It's ready to go. Um, yeah. Dude, it's on, ready. on, that you're in the car on the track. The track. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Pretty wild. What a story. Holy smokes. That's, that's not ending in on a downer, is it? No. no. Right? No. I mean, no. no. Okay. Look, like I said, this is, I, I think I'm meant to be where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm so excited for Daytona. I'm so excited for the race. I'm so excited to get out there and compete. You know, it's, it's been a while since I've gotten to compete and especially, you know, at that level. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. Yeah. It's putting a bow on it, Kenny. Yeah, it's, it it's bringing the story full circle, especially <laughs> that jacket. <laughs> yeah. Just get that in a frame right now. Get a shadow box, protect that thing. Yeah, oh, well, there's just a few instances Whew. in our lifetime with well, the last 20 years where this is, it's our 23rd year, Frankie, of doing Speed Freaks. And there are those occasions where every all, the three of us know exactly where we were mm -hmm. when certain occasions hit. And mm -hmm. we were fresh, still wet behind the ears in February of 2001 right. when Dale Earnhardt died. It's like, whoa, this yeah. is the bench. That's not a benchmark, but here's the first instance that we're going to remember as mm -hmm. Speed Freaks. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone, you know, it's one of those – moments in life you know if you're if you're a race fan or even if you're not like that that's something you're going to remember forever where you were um you know i don't have the best memory but i i remember that day very vividly um but hope to have make more memories at daytona and and uh and uh maybe some more positive ones <laughs> heck yeah no no no. it's coming 2023 is going to be amazing for sure <laughs> Frankie, we're going to turn this into a two-parter. Can, okay. can you roll with me here? With I'm going to say, hey, Frankie, look, can you come back next segment? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, he's not going to come back next segment. <laughs> We've already done that. Yeah, he's already done that. Uh, as you could tell, a pre-recorded interview with <laughs> Frankie Munez here in the Freak Nation. And again, uh, we obliterated his, his name when it comes to Saying uh, again, I think we used five different iterations. But now we know. Yeah. He said his grandpa wants it pronounced. Well, it, the uh, the official way to pronounce it is Muniz. Muniz. Yeah. Muniz. Got it. I'll uh, again. It's not gonna be Muniz. Yeah. Okay. Put put Shishevsky. I can't even say it. Shishevsky. Shishevsky. Put that spelling in front of me, and I'll look right at it, and I will just completely go bonkers. K R Z Y Z E W S K I. Well, excuse me. Spelling Someone cast. excelled in school. Me? <laughs> too, too busy making candle. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, you made little mailbox bombs, didn't you? What are you talking about? Did you, what? I thought you said you submitted that. Mailbox bombs? That's federal. Right? You don't want to, the statute of limitations. Oh, good point. <laughs> okay, Jesus. maybe not. No, that's what you did. You mailed it to a company on how to make a Something it wasn't a bomb, Crash. Stop it. You better stop, Crash. Oh, dang. <laughs> Holy smokes. Sorry. You can email me at statmc <laughs> at speedfreaks.tv. <laughs> oh, oh, yep. Um, that just happened, Freak Nation. Sorry. Anyway, the, the full interview with Frankie, we, have to, we had to cut out about 10 minutes of that. The yeah. full interview with Frankie will be up on our YouTube page tomorrow. That story about Dale Earnhardt and... With, with the autographed jacket. Sterling Marlin, Kenny Schrader, Dale Earnhardt Sr., the three who were involved in the last lap crash in 20, 000, 2001. Right. And he has a jacket signed by all three of them. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. That, that, mm, that's a piece of history. And he makes Arguably his, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s last autograph. And he makes his cool. debut on that track. In that car. on the, In Sterling Marlin's car on that same track. Yeah. Whoa. Frankie Munez here in the Freak Nation. Again, the full interview will be up on our YouTube page tomorrow. Be sure you follow us on YouTube. Official Speed Freaks. Next hour, Logan Seavey. Dude won himself his first Chili Bowl over the weekend. And just so many freaky topics to hit. But coming up after the break, your Statman Scat and Travis Pastrana making some news. So, yeah, big hour and, what, 20 minutes coming up? What freaks next? Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold-out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. There's a price war in the insurance business, and you may be paying too much. Call the Term Lifeline right now and see if you can save 40%. Half-million-dollar plans and up, that's our specialty, even great smokers' rates. Protect your family today. Call the Term Lifeline right now for a free quote. 866-549-TERM. 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 General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. MAV TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab us some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you got to share. Awesome! Lucas works. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Brought to part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. It's edgy and downright offensive at times. So he wins my What an Idiot for the month of July. See the world of NASCAR through their eyes. Hey, it's TJ, Brett, and Freddie. Superstar guests and plenty of hot takes. And we are Door Bumper Clear. NASCAR hits Mad TV with Door Bumper Clear. Only on Mad TV, Motorsports Network. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. Well, 
Last night it was the 37th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl presented by our good friends at General Tire, which reminds me, go to GeneralTire.com. There's some crap box weather out there. Make sure you're rolling on new General Tires. Whatever you got in your freaking snappy garage or out in your shed, they got a tire for you. Go to GeneralTire.com. That's GeneralTire.com, the official tire of the freaks. I've always admired Travis Pastrana, his commitment to his fan base, especially the young kids who admire his adventures, is admirable. It's built him a huge social media following. However, word this week that 2311 Racing will field a car for Travis in the Daytona 500 gives me some concerns. First, Good for him. He's won championship and has run in NASCAR before. 2013 full-time Xfinity season saw him run ninth at Richmond, his best finish in the series. But in the midst of all the whining about inflation and no money anywhere, someone's found money to buy Travis a ride in exchange for some marketing muscle. And turning Travis into marketing muscle at Daytona shows you what racing has become. A brass ring for those with the longest fingers that can grab the hardest. This also shows young drivers in the truck and Xfinity garages they'd better build their social media followers. Track efforts are falling off NASCAR's ladder. It appears keyboard warriors carry more weight than on track warriors. And there's another sign. That's another sign of racing's apocalypse. Peace. All right, I want to talk a little bit about the Statman Scat and Travis Pastrana. And again, who he doesn't care about what I think, and it's no big deal what I think, but he did not do very well in the Xfinity Series. And I like what Statman said. He put, you know, put a little – it was like a little – okay, he finished ninth at Richmond. What's the, the old saying about squirrel and his nuts? I get it, okay? But, look, this is all a money play, what Statman's talking about. And it, 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 it might just be a bucket listing for one of our favorite athletes oh. of all time, Travis Pastrana, is to try and get in the yeah. Daytona 500. How could it not be a bucket list? He's driven stock cars. He's driven almost everything else un- under the sun. Yeah, come on. One of the greatest races in the world. Well, can, I be, yes. can I play Mr. Prude here and say why Travis Pastrana and all his millions take the seat of someone else that's been trying to get in the Daytona 500? For many, many years. Well, I don't know that it's Travis's idea, first of all, to do this. We don't know. uh, 2311 hasn't announced officially. This is all reports, and they haven't denied it. Uh, But let's say Acme Wheel and Tire is going to uh, sponsor the car. And... Uh, or Acme Ice Cream. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Acme Ice Cream is going to sponsor the car. And Acme Ice Cream wants to use Travis's name, and Travis is willing, you pay me the money, I'll let you use my name. So this is all, I, I really believe this is all a marketing ploy. Uh, I don't know that Travis uh, is in behind it, but uh, yes, it could be a, a uh a bucket list thing for him. But uh, Kenny, I agree a thousand percent. These kids that are in the uh, truck series and in the uh, uh, Xfinity series that have spent their lives trying to get to the Daytona 500, and uh, you know, and they've got 10,000 people. And we talked to drivers who have 10,000 people in their social media universe, and that's not good enough. They want uh, the sponsors want hundreds of thousands, if not millions, because those are the kind of numbers that they would get if they were on TV. And it's cheaper to buy uh, a driver than it is to buy a TV spot. Well, it's sort of a chicken egg scenario. What would be better for the sport long term for 2311 to put a the truck champ or a truck up and coming truck or Xfinity driver in the seat? just because he deserves it because he's been working his whole life for it or to get Travis Pastrana in the seat to bring more eyeballs to the greatest race in NASCAR and hope to grow the sport, to grow the sport for that. Well, I don't know that it's it's to get eyeballs to look at the race. I think it's get eyeballs to 
pay attention to Travis and get the camera on Travis's car and uh, get the camera to show the Acme ice cream banner on the side of the car. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know that, uh, you know, uh, who's things that are changing in NASCAR when they put the race in the Coliseum and had pit bull and ice cube. There's no longer the old Wiz Khalifa NASCAR. now Wiz Khalifa doing the is it free race or no, he's doing the halftime. Half time. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Now who would Wiz Khalifa or ice cube or pit bull, you know, nobody knew how to spell those names uh, in the NASCAR universe uh, two years ago, but now they do. They want they want to make something different, and Travis might be part of that. Uh, but I think the most of all, it's just some marketing muscle on the part of whoever's going to sponsor the car. Richie, does does he punch the ticket for you? Oh yeah, yeah, he absolutely does. I was I just have a quick Travis Pastrana story. When he was racing in the Xfinity series, it was then the Nationwide series. He came to Phoenix Raceway, and at the time, I was still in in school at Arizona State. So I was covering the race at the time, doing some PR stuff for the track. And I remember actually um, going up to Travis Pastrana after a race. And he had, I don't even think he had finished the race. I think he finished uh, several laps down, 35th place or something like that, right? And I remember going up to Travis after the race and, and asking him for an interview. And he was like the coolest guy I've ever met. He was like, yeah, cool, man. Let's do it. And I... And as soon as I walked up to him and asked him for the interview, I was like, dude, I get to talk to Travis Pastrana for people my age. It's the coolest thing ever because every summer, I don't care who you are. If you're my age, you were tuned in and watching the X games. And a lot of times you were watching Travis Pastrana. He was the guy at the X games for almost damn near a decade for people my age. And he was on sports center every night and top 10 plays during the X game. So to get a chance to do that, I thought it was cool. And for him to do this, it's cool. It's going to give me another reason to tune into the Daytona 500. But I did have a, a quick question for Statman here, which is, does it make any difference to you that he's going to have to race his way in to actually get a spot on the starting grid for the Daytona 500? Because as far as we know, the only two 2311 cars that are locked, going to be locked in based on the mm -hmm. charter system are Tyler Reddick and, 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 um, and Bubba. I'm forgetting and Bubba Wallace. Thank you. Exactly. So he's going to have to race his way in. Same thing with Jimmy Johnson too. Does that make any difference to you, Stad? that if he does start the Daytona 500, he's going to have to have earned that spot to start the race. Yeah. I don't know if it, that, that might be the wrong question. If he's, he should race his way in. If he's not going to be in the series regularly, you can't be in a front to everybody else who's trying to make it and just say, come on, Travis, forget everybody that spent millions and put their lives on the line. Uh, and here, we'll give you a ride. What the heck? You can't do that. I mean, uh, you know, that uh, I think it's the only fair way to do it. It's the only right way to do it. He should, he should earn the right to be there. And if he doesn't make it, then somebody spent a lot of money for nothing. But see, Richie's, Talking points are exactly why I think this is not just a marketing ploy for a corporate sponsor on the side of his car, but to get eyeballs to the Daytona 500, which will essentially translate to maybe season long followers of NASCAR. I mean, Travis Pastrana punches mega tickets on eyeballs that are currently not watching NASCAR now. It's it's. I like it. I think it's a genius move, yeah. whether it's Travis's idea or 2311's idea. You I send like out it. right, right, Crasher. You send Travis sends out one tweet. Watch me today at 1.30 Eastern, run the Daytona 500. <laughs> There's six yeah, he, people with one tweet. If he doesn't make the race, then all of that's for naught. You know, at mm -hmm. 1.30 Eastern, they say, hey, watch everybody who's faster than me go out and run the race. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come yeah, to it. You know, you'll probably make the race. But uh, NASCAR has a way of putting important people in important places in important races on television. Important places. There was important people in important places in important races. Yeah, That's love saying. that. And patent that stuff. Dot com. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah, right. Dang, man. SMI, Statman Island. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great if we get an artist. Listen. Here's Statman. Here's some background. Paint him on an island. <laughs> He'd be in his mahogany love chair on a beach with a cigar. 
and some Corvassier. All right. Uh, Freak Nation, coming up next hour, his name is Logan Seavey. Uh, he was the most popular man on dirt last night when he won the Chili Bowl, the 37th annual Chili Bowl. He joins us next hour. More regarding IndyCar and Dratty Formula One. Big second hour coming up. Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Oil Studios. Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio redefined. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab us some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you got to share. Awesome! Lucas works. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Brought to you in part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Our team is on the Rubicon Trail today, running over 125 vehicles over one of the toughest trails in the world. With all the different modifications people can make for their Jeep 4x4, the only product that touches the ground is a tire. This is the team that you want testing your product. I've been off-roading for 30 years now, and you, you definitely don't need anything bigger than 37-inch tires. Our founder, Mark Smith, drove from the tip of South America to the tip of North America on 31-inch tires. The General Tire X-Series meets our standards. We have the ability for accelerated testing in all conditions. Mud, rock, dirt. We're out here this week highlighting the capability of the General Grabber X3 to see how this tire can perform in unbelievable conditions. It's incredible to watch General Tire deliver in this terrain. General Tire delivers me to a fishing tournament, the outdoors, jeeping, whatever it is that you want to do, it's outdoor life is what it is. Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. Mav TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on Mav TV Motorsports Network. You are listening to Speed Freaks Motorsports Radio Redefined. Freak 
Broadcasting from the Lucas Oil Studios. Driven by General Tire. It's Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent. We love to party. Crash Gladys. What are we doing for the bachelorette party? And Statman. I am serious. Here's the Freaks. In about 15 minutes, Freak Nation, that's 15 minutes from now, Logan Seavey, your Chili Bowl winner last night in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or this morning. He'll be joining us here in the Freak Nation. Second hour of the Freaks, Lucas Oil Studios. Thank you, General Tire, for letting us ride on those rubbers for the last 20-plus years. Again, Statman Scat coming up at about 45 past the hour with more conversation with Travis Pastrana. And a couple of open segments tonight that we've got so much to hit uh, that's gone on over the last two, three weeks that really we haven't had a chance to come on and do a live show, a full live show. We spent about 45 minutes with some fantastic stories uh, and some memories of Ken Block last week. And it was cool to see a dude in the airport this morning, the Tulsa airport, with a number 43 Block hoodie. On oh, wow. I missed today. that. Nice. Well, I, I missed half the things walking in there anyway because we had to get up at freaking five o'clock after getting to bed at 4.50. <laughs> That's a great 10-minute <laughs> nap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Frankie Munez, last hour, you can watch the entire 30-plus minutes with Frankie Munez on our YouTube page, Official Speed Freaks, tomorrow, again on YouTube. How you guys doing? If you're watching us on Facebook Live on WWT Raceway, Lucas Oil, Mav TV, Speed Freaks, and many more. YouTube Live, thank you guys for being a part of this big old thing. Curious how this has changed over the years, because my attitude's changed towards this. After spending three days at the Chili Bowl, and if you're not familiar with what the Chili Bowl is, it's an indoor dirt track arena. Exactly. It's a dirt track arena inside, okay? There's 365 cars vying for 24 spots, and they spend five days, six days? Started Monday, so six days. Six days trying to get into those 24 spots. So there's a crap ton of dirt. A crap ton of methanol. There's all kinds of stuff in the air that we probably, as a, as individuals, we lose five or six months per chili bowl visit from from that. But That's probably right. I digress. Is it cool to do a little flyby booger pick now? Oh, dude. I mean, I, I, I think the boogers cook so quickly in a place like the Expo Center in Tulsa that you just gotta you just gotta wait. You just got to really? let them build. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Let them build, let them build, let them build. Finally get back to your hotel room 16 hours later and blow it out. It's such a great feeling. You just go, Bleh! and it's just slugs coming out. And yeah. they're dark slugs. And mm, it's just they feels probably, They probably have a booth that deep fries them for you. Don't they? That's a great business. Nice job, Chad. Yeah. Nice job. There you go. Statman two for two in the app. Tonight, a couple of these jokes. Nice job, Stat. But Deep no, no, fried Tulsa I, dirt crasher. I, have a, I don't. You know, yeah, I've got some Booger good size thing. slugs, as you call them, in there. But mm -hmm. I've got dry ones all around the rim of my nose, where you kind of do the little flyby. If you're oh, watching it's just me, a teeny tiny the dry flyby, one? the flyby, yeah, the flyby yeah, like this fine. kind of flyby. Who doesn't just get the little dry crust do, around the edge do, of your nose? Richie, yeah, do you do this? On, do you okay. do a little, little thumb pick on the outside of the nose? Do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's so, totally okay, but you got to do it the right way, though. We, and again, we're for the radio folks there. Kenny, come on, give us a demonstration. Okay. It's just, yeah, you just just go. Yeah, just a, just a quick little little uh, little little uh, swipe of the nose. Bold nostrils. Got to grab bold nostrils at the same time. Oh, right. that's there you go. Unique. Okay, so for the ladies out there, I don't grab both nostrils at the same time. But if I'm got to get a little crusty on just the corner of my nose opening, I just kind of. I put my forefinger on my nose tip, then I take my thumbnail and I just kind of, you know, right there, there right on the edge. I just scrape it. But you anybody driving right now listening is like, oh yeah, you're doing it too. You're touching the tip of your nose and you're using your thumbnail and you're just scraping that crust. I've yeah. seen some people do lobotomies when they're driving in the car, you know, just so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it to, to take your single digit and ram it up in into your nose hole. That's just that's not that's still not kosher. I don't think the millennials are allowing. Uh, it. That's a morning procedure. Just you on the toilet know, in crash. the morning. I'm talking yeah, about in yeah, public. No. Like when I was on the plane today, I did a couple of flyby picks, 
and I missed it two or three times. So I had to keep going. So I thought, man, I'm going to use my use up my. We, we generated the toilet practices. <laughs> Yeah, do you pick your nose or play with your phone on the toilet? You guys, you guys are really tired. You must have oh, we are. about a 10-minute nap at best. Wow. Well, I will never forget. I think it was last year. It might have been two years ago. Having the booger conversation with now two-time NHRA Funny Car champion Ron Caps. We need some, we need some rock 80s music for this. For okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What boogers in the motorsports world? You know what? No, everybody in the world can chime in on this. What are the worst boogers? Or maybe some think that they're the best. Clutch dust boogers? Mm. Because those are really dark. Or dirt track boogers. That was Matt Hagen. No, that was Ron Caps. That was Matt Hagen. Well, it might have also been Matt Hagen, but Ron Caps admitted to us on this show that right. he had a booger so bad once going down the quarter mile yes. and he blew it out. And it hit the inside of his helmet, his visor screen in his helmet. So, yeah, it's a it's a reality in racing. Richie, Mo millennials aren't killing booger picking, are they? <laughs> I don't think so. No, yeah. only in the only in the friendly confines of your home, though. Really? Well, OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But a fly yeah, like you were like you were talking about. Yeah, you don't do the you don't do the full one finger nose pick in, in public. That's yeah. a no, no, no. In public, I would I would admit I would agree with Statman. Public includes driving your car in your own driver's seat. Don't do that. <laughs> well, see, I've gotten to the point now where again I keep napkins all over my damn car because you just do that with kids, and I, I chew a lot of gum, so I'll throw my gum in the in the uh, in the napkins. So I, look, I don't give a damn if I really need to dig. I've got a napkin to wipe it off. I'll, I'll it's in my car, Crasher. I don't care. I'm never going to see those people. Why didn't anymore. you dig before you got in the car? Because, it, listen, I was too focused on carrying the bags from the groceries. I couldn't pick. I don't what? know. No. Just wait another five minutes until you get home or in a public bathroom and pick then. <laughs> Richie, take this, take this little bit oh, where, where I ask about the flyby and put a poll out there tomorrow at Speed Freaks on Twitter and saying, is this, is this cool? Tomorrow or tonight? We can just do or it start now. tonight. Yeah, just right. do it now. Okay. Yeah. Whenever, you, whenever you're able to pull it as soon as possible. No, literally. Right. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, put it up there. Is, is, are flybys cool? I'm not going to say still cool because they weren't cool 20 years ago. You just didn't touch your nose, Stat Man. Growing up, get your finger out of yeah. your nose. Yeah. You know, I mean, you did. You, and when your parents told you that, they'd sit there and dare you to do anything, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you did it, I told you, and, you know, that was the end of the conversation for the rest of the evening. So I'll be curious what the Freak Nation thinks in regards to uh, to flybys. And again, we, so I'm, you were getting into a Chili Bowl conversation, and this is where we are ten, almost 10 minutes later. Yeah, because I think I've done it. I did it the first hour. I did a couple of. Oh, at the couple, Chili Bowl it, last yeah, night? I do, the, I, do, I do like the, the bang, bang, the bang, bang. I don't know. I, I think that's just trying to. Yeah, I think that I think if you're watching this, and again, I'm sorry for our, our radio consumers right now. Oh, they can uh, all visualize. Yeah, where well, you go thumb, nose, and then you take the index finger and wipe the nose. It's it's kind of like a cover up. Like, no, I just didn't pick my nose with my thumb. Like, bam, bam. See, so that nobody knows until you end up with stuff smeared on your cheek. You know? <laughs> Which I've seen with. Okay, our daughter, by now the way. that's the next story, Stat Man. We got a break here in about two minutes, and and, and Swabby, I got it on my end. You uh, know what? I like how our listeners are trying to bring us in. Glad to see Kevin get another golden driller last night. Thank you for trying to keep it on racing and not track boogers. Thank you, Jason Wayne. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate now, it. Kevin see, Swindell, now five you, golden drillers. If you do get, get some of that dried mass on your thumb, the worst thing to do is, is then, bam, kind of flick it, right? If you're on a plane or you, or you discreetly on kind of take plane. it. Like, on yeah. the plane, <laughs> so you got three hundred of your closest friends watching you flip that into the air, huh? No, I'm not saying. I'm saying you don't do that. I was, I was recommending that you act like you have an itch behind your leg, and you go down there and wipe it. Okay, after your fingers have been up in your nose, yeah. and then you act like you have an itch behind your leg. No, people no. know. People know. All right. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Freak Nation, there's ten minutes of nose picking etiquette, and you're welcome. Freak Nation. That's how we roll. His name. Wow. His name is Logan Seavey. He won the 37th annual Lucas Oil 
Chili Bowl presented by our good friends at General Tire. And no, we didn't ask them about boogers. Should have. Damn we it. Should have. Maybe. Imagine being cooped up in that freaking lid, that helmet, for 30 minutes. Actually, he's probably got the cleanest nose yeah. of all out there. <laughs> yeah. We're the ones inhaling the dirt. He's not inhaling it inside his helmet. Yeah. And Dreddy making some more noise or Formula One making louder noise. We'll get to that story coming up. But again, Logan Seavey coming up. Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Oil Studios. Freak Nation. Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio. Redefined. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold-out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most. Well, I, I broke too early. We're getting used to a new clock, Freak Nation. That's just that's how we're oh. doing it here. We're just we're getting used to a new clock. So I broke a little early. We got to break at eleven past the hour. Eleven minutes and fifty-two seconds past the hour. If I trust my phone, so I'm I'd be back just in fine. Now. Did you have to go off for a pick crash? No. <laughs> All right. Now we'll get this straight, Freak Nation. 23 years, baby. Yeah, that's how we roll here in the Freak Nation. Now we will yep. get this straight. Sorry about that, affiliates. <laughs> Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold-out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. There's a price war in the insurance business, and you may be paying too much. Call the Term Lifeline right now and see if you can save 40%. Half million dollar plans and up, that's our specialty. Even great smokers rates. Protect your family today. Call the Term Lifeline right now for a free quote. 866-549-TERM. 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 General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. MAV TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab us some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you gotta share. Awesome! Lucas works. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Watching part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. 
Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. It's edgy and downright offensive at times. So he wins my What an Idiot for the month of July. See the world of NASCAR through their eyes. Hey, it's TJ, Brett, and Freddie. Superstar guests and plenty of hot takes. And we are Door Bumper Clear. NASCAR hits Mad TV with Door Bumper Clear. Only on Mad TV, Motorsports Network. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. We are football fans here in the Freak Nation, and what happened over the last couple of days from the San Francisco 49ers and the four Ooh. touchdowns from Mr. Irrelevant to the Jacksonville Jaguars going from four interceptions <laughs> to putting a beat down on the Chargers. And right now we've got eight seconds left in uh, Baltimore versus Cincinnati. Statman, Suave, if, you, uh, if you're about to, two or three minutes ahead of us, shut the hell up, all right? Don't let me know what happens, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to conduct a big time national radio show right now while watching some football. As of now, it's 24 17 since he up, but Baltimore is driving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only eight seconds, though. Come on. He needs uh, whatever oh, they the, could like the, do it, the, the fifth string quarterback for. Is that Huntley? Who is the quarterback? Mm-hmm. Right, right? Huntley. All right. Uh, just, I'm just uh, looking at Statman's face. I'm Logan to... Seavey. Again, big time <laughs> Chili Bowl From winner last Seavey. night. Last night, he, uh, he joins us coming up in moments. Your stat man, Scat, Crash Gladys, Pit News and Notes. We'll hit it for the first time in 2023, coming up in about 15 minutes. But first, I had a chance to catch up with your 37th annual Chili Bowl winner, Logan Seavey. He's been chasing it for about seven years now and finally got it. Uh, grabbed the pole, lost the lead, then about uh, 10, 15 laps left. He got back to the lead and won himself a big-time trophy, a driller. What all sprint car drivers want, they want the driller from the Chili Bowl. And he joins us right now. Morning is here in the Freak Nation, and I like watching you sit here at the table moments after the race, and people are asking you about how does it feel. It's one of the stupid questions I've ever heard in my life, just after whether it's a football game or basketball game or a freaking 55-lap race in in a midget sprint car. You said, I don't know. When's it going to hit you, man? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's it's starting to, you know, I feel like even took the checker and, you know, coasted around for a few laps, um, trying to give Kevin as much time to get down to us as possible so he could celebrate with us. And, um, yeah, you know, it's it's huge to, uh, you know, see the rowdies and see the whole crowd go crazy in this, in this building. The atmosphere is unlike any place else. And, um, you know, even after all that, it didn't really hit me until I, until I got this driller and I uh, was able to hold it and take some pictures with it. And um, yeah, like I said, this didn't, didn't really fully sink in. I don't even know if it still has. So um, yeah, it'll, it'll be, you know, it might maybe hit me once I get back and I'm able to celebrate with everybody and, and um, yeah, have a great time tonight. Well, you talk about the confidence level that you've, I guess it's come about recently because the last couple of years is like, eh. But Kevin Swindell gives you a call and says, dude, I want you to run for me with the Chili Bowl. Did that build your confidence, or were you still questioning your confidence if you go in this damn thing? Um, I always, you know, I knew I could win this race, but, um, man, it just takes so many things to go right mm-hmm. all week. Um, you know, anything can happen. You know, I didn't even make my prelim night feature last year, and we come back this year, and we win the race. So, um, like I said, anything can happen. Um, 
confidence-wise, yeah, I mean, it was not not the highest, you know, for the last year or so. And then mm-hmm. I went out west and ran pretty well and was racing with people that, you know, I felt like I should be racing with. And I kind of, you know, kind of got my confidence back. And then as soon as I got in this car, I just, you know, you know, this is like a light switch. And uh, me and Kevin just worked really well together. And it was never, never really a question whether we can win or not. It was, you know, just, uh, you know, what we needed to do to put ourselves in position. We know what the Swindells mean to the Chili Bowl. Kevin, in particular, your car owner, what he's done. Uh, where do you think his head's at right now? Do you think he's higher in the clouds than uh, the winner? I, I mean, I, if he's not, it's, he's, we're pretty dang close. I'm, I mean, I know this race means as much to him as, as anything else, and, and that's why he's the guy I want to drive for. You know, I want to I want to race for people. Okay, why do you want to drive for Kevin's window? I want to I want to race for people that really want to win this race. You know, this is this is a bucket list on on him. You know, on his list, and this is on my bucket list as well. So, um, you know, I feel like when we come here, you know, a lot of people obviously really want to win this race, but uh, it's just a little extra special racing with Kevin. Much different qualifying than what you're used to. Chili Bowl is one of a kind. Can you run me through the five days or however many? Uh, times you had to get on that track to qualify the mentality did it increase as you got closer or did you back off because you know you need to be a bit more mellow uh, I feel like this week I was calmer than I've ever been um, you know we got the practice on Sunday and um, the car drove good handled good ran good um, and then Monday the race of champions that's where it really kind of clicked we you know went out last to qualify and we went second quick and then uh, we were able to race to the field on the race of champions and, and race with good cars and um, and then, yeah, then you have, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, three days of basically sitting around waiting. And, and that's where the, you know, the anxiety kind of builds and you're just sitting there waiting and uh, just getting anxious to get going. And, um, you know, you can kind of get yourself, um, you know, worked up a little bit waiting around and uh, getting nervous and whatnot. But luckily, you know, I think this is number seven for me racing here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't say it ever gets easier, but, you know, for whatever reason, you know, being here this week, um, you know, there was just a different vibe around the pits, and um, you know, it was just a lot calmer, you know, a lot calmer mentality all, all week, and I never really got worried or nervous for my qualifying day or, or for today even, you know, walking across the stage, you know, normally my heart's pounding, and, and I was really calm today, and I feel like uh, I feel like that's huge. Cannon led a few laps, of course, during the race. I think it was 10 laps, but you know, you've got Cannon, you got Tanner around, you dudes who you ran against many, many years, including Tanner. Are you thinking about those guys maybe 15%, 20%, or is it more thinking about those guys than what you're driving on the track? Uh, you know, I'm obviously trying to get my car going as fast as I can, and uh, I don't think I've ever turned as many shock knobs under green as, as I did today. And um, Yeah, I mean, they moved the screen so it's harder, but I could still see it. I could still, you know, get off a of four and, and take a look at it and see what my gap was and, um, you know, try to manage that. I knew it was, wasn't was much, you know, the whole race. It was never probably more than two or three car lengths. But, um, but yeah, Cannon getting to the lead probably helped me a little bit. Uh, and then I knew I needed to get him, get back by him quick and uh, I was able to pass him on a restart and, and then kind of run where I needed to run and, and try to get away. And the track kept changing and changing and changing. and. I didn't really know, like everyone said, no one knew where they needed to be, and mm-hmm. everyone was searching the whole race. What did you um, mean your car, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's right, what do you mean your car and your car is just, it's just ran like crap, it felt crappy? Yeah, I think what everyone's car felt like crap. Uh, no one could get their stuff to, to grip up, like I said earlier, I kind of had to just smash the backstretch wall to even get going down the backstretch. There was like five laps where I could get off a of two and carry speed, and then the rest mm-hmm. of the time, I was just really easy on the pedal, and you know, the car would just stand up and, and spin tires all the way down the back stretch so um and then you just got to run in the cushion was good in three and four for a while and you just had to run really hard to to knock it tight and uh tanner kept poking his nose and i knew i i couldn't uh i couldn't make a mistake because he's you know obviously right there every time and uh yeah to hold him off is really special he's obviously uh one of the one of the best here and uh he he beat everyone last year and you know to come back here this year and then to beat him heads up is is really cool is there a watch in that little canister over there? there what is. is that? Yeah, it's a Chili Bowl watch. So just checked it out for the first time. They just handed it to me. That's it. So that's uh, it's pretty dang cool. Yeah. So this obviously the drillers of thing we want to win, but mm-hmm. this is this is pretty cool cherry on top. So Logan C, do you go out and get lit up tonight, or what? What do you do? We'll see. I think it's pretty late, right? It's yeah. gotta be like after one o'clock. I feel like. What time is it? It is currently 1.23 Yeah, it's pretty You're late. 25, it just starts. Yeah, no, I'm right. good, yeah. 
I'm good. So I'm sure there'll be a party in the pits going, and uh, we'll probably just hang out here in the building. And and then uh, yeah, I'm sure by the time we get out of here, it won't be. It'll be really late, so we'll probably just go home. 2023 after that. Logan Sieve, your Chili Bowl winner. That's badass, huh? That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, right. yeah. It's a pretty dang special race. So um, yeah, I guess for now we'll celebrate, and then tomorrow we'll start getting ready for next year. That a boy. Thank you. Congrats. Appreciate it. Dude. Right. Very good dude. Yeah. I want to see more from him. I just, there's, he just, he has it. <laughs> I just like him a lot. Yeah. It, 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 we got a break. Cause I want, I do want to get into, I, I do want to get into our dirt beer conversation. Dirt in our beer? Yeah. Okay. So Turn we'll four. Dirt in the nose and now. Paris Auto Speedway. Mm. Many, many moons ago. Ooh. I will say this, though. We got back to the hotel. I know we got to super, super be quick with this. We got back to the hotel last night. We're looking up some more things on Logan CV. And Kenny runs across, oh, my gosh. His girlfriend was one of Henley's babysitters <laughs> back in our drag boat days. <laughs> what a small world. Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, your stat man scat, crash that is pit news and notes, all coming up here in the Freak Nation. Motorsports Radio, redefined. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold-out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. There's a price war in the insurance business, and you may be paying too much. Call the Term Lifeline right now and see if you can save 40%. Half million dollar plans and up, that's our specialty, even great smokers rates. Protect your family today. Call the Term Lifeline right now for a free quote. 866-549-TERM, 866-549-TERM, 866-549-TERM. General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. Mav TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on Mav TV, Motorsports Network. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab a sun. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you gotta share. Awesome! Lucas works. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Watching part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. 
it's edgy and downright offensive at times. So he wins my what an idiot for the month of July. See the world of NASCAR through their eyes. Hey, it's TJ, Brett, and Freddie. Superstar guests and plenty of hot takes. And we are door bumper clear. NASCAR hits Mad TV with door bumper clear. Only on Mad TV, Motorsports Network. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. It almost went to overtime <laughs> between Cincinnati and the Baltimore Ravens. If that old number three with the Ravens would have extended those little alligator arms of his and grabbed that ball in the end zone with that Hail Mary from Huntley, that uh, we'd be talking about a little bit of overtime right now. But Baltimore Ravens head to Buffalo, and Richard C. Suave's Jacksonville Jaguars oh. head to Kansas City. Yes, I cannot. Waiting. I cannot wait for Baltimore. the Cincinnati wait, wait, Buffalo wait, matchup. Wait, wait, Baltimore goes home. Baltimore lost. Uh, oh, Cincinnati. did you say Baltimore? I mean, Cincy. Yeah, Cincinnati Cin- goes Baltimore. to Baltimore, Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. Cincinnati goes to Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah, yeah and the Jaguars go to uh, to Kansas City. Right, Baltimore is counting down the days to Orioles season. The Jaguars, can you believe the Jaguars? Man. The Chargers, they got to be, you know, <laughs> talking and the, talking to themselves in the corner in the dark. I mean, they twenty-seven to nothing to lose thirty-one to thirty. I mean, that's crazy. The Broncos fan, I politely chuckled. Stan, yeah, nobody, nobody cares about the Broncos. Stop it, stop it, Mister <laughs> Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Favorite hey. team is whoever's playing the Broncos. Right, you've said that numerous occasions. He said that for almost twenty three, almost twenty three years. Right. I know, I know. Yeah. He's still bitter from the playoff losses that the Broncos gave his brownies. Hey, I get it. Listen, I get we, we got to get to put news and notes, but real quick, quick question, Statman, give me uh, the over under for the Cowboys and the Buccaneers tomorrow night on Monday Night Football. <laughs> How many millions? Seriously, how many millions of people do you think will be locked into that game? Over, under, uh, I'm going with uh, 17 million. Over. Richie? Um, Way over. I would set it at 39 and a half million. I think this thing's going over 40 million. Oh, I'll say over 30. Yeah, but not 39 Ooh. million, Richie. It's going 40. I'm telling you right now, the two Thanksgiving games, actually the two Christmas games, one of the holidays, over 40 million for – when the Cowboys were playing, I think it was, I think it was Thanksgiving for over 40 million people watch tomorrow's a holiday. Martin Luther King jr. Day, mm-hmm. 40 plus million people will watch the Cowboys get destroyed by Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Book it. Take it to the bank. How many times have the Cowboys beat Brady in the off season? Donuts. Donuts. Yep. Donuts. The and NFL jerseys- showdown between the Cincinnati Bengals and Buffalo Bills, which was postponed in the first quarter after the Bills' safety, DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest and collapsed on the field, was the most watched Monday night football telecast in ESPN history, averaging 23.8 million. Yeah, like I said, 17 million. <laughs> what is tomorrow night? Tomorrow night is also ESPN? Yeah. 40 million. That, you know, the. Yeah, Super Bowls. Come on, forty billion. It's a playoff game. It's isolated. There's nothing else going on in this sports world. People love nothing better than tuning into the NFL on a holiday, especially when it's the Dallas Cowboys. Because for whatever be reason, for thirty plus years, they've been America's team despite not winning jack crap. <laughs> It'll be less than forty million, much less. <laughs> you want to bet Suave on something, that man? No, I'm not betting Suave. I, you know, I hate to lose. No, I don't bet anything because I hate to lose. Suave? So what do you set the over under at? 39 and a half. 39 and a half. You got to put the hook out there. 39 and a half. Huh? Mm-hmm. Man, I was. Way under. 
take it, take that mortgage money and put it on under. That's 16 million more than the most watched ESPN game. Yep. Way under. Whew. Take the mortgage money. Don't worry about the bread, living under the bridge. Take the mortgage money yeah. and put it on the under. I'm going to say 30 million. Hey, so, Crash, you don't do some on, good news. Hold okay. on, hold on, hold on. Damn it. Let's Paul in Dallas right. says apparently the game is on ABC there, not ESPN. That does matter ratings-wise, and it's a big market. Mm -hmm. Will other markets follow suit and put it on ABC? It's the same damn family. It's the same family, exactly. But it matters ratings-wise. ESPN, not as many households have. Put it on ABC. You could still be branded ESPN on ABC. Across the country, it's airing on ABC. You got across it. Across the country. The wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. You say, Richie, across the country, it is on ABC tomorrow? Yes. Forget yes. it. On a yeah. I'm going over Richie's 39 and a half million. Hold then. on a second. I'm yep. looking here. Yep. It says ESPN, ABC, and ESPN Plus. Is that right? Yes. Will it air on all three of those? Mm hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Got Peyton and Eli Manning on ESPN two, if that's your forte. Jeez. Over. Okay, I'll 39 go. Thirty nine and a half, baby. I told you. If ABC is a part of it, then yes. I think forty million is attainable. Crash Gladys Spit News and Notes brought to you by our good friends at General Tire, GeneralTire.com, a great website to check out. That car outside, sitting in six inches of fresh snow. Go out there and put your finger between each pieces of in the thread, tread, excuse me. Chili bowl. Yeah. Take a freaking penny. <laughs> if you can see Lincoln's freaking head, you need some new rubber, man. Mm -hmm. Go to generaltire.com to get some new general tires. Crash, you're sorry about that. You got about uh, four minutes. Oh, that's easy peasy. All, All right. right. So aside from us coming back for just a bit last week to celebrate the life of Ken Block and others we sadly lost, over the holidays, uh, there's a lot to catch up on. We've teased it throughout the entire show, so let's get to it. Whether it's Jimmy Johnson's new Legacy Motor Club and his newly minted 84 machine, or Michael Andretti and the Andretti Global Group getting the stink eye from some in Formula One, or Kyle Larson finally announcing his intentions for the Indy 500, even though it's a year and a half from now, or Travis Pastrana. We did talk about this last hour. Travis Pastrana running in this year's Daytona 500. He does need to qualify. He does need to work his way in. Or we also talked about this last hour. Actor Frankie Muniz, Muniz, as he says his grandpa wants us to say it, racing at Daytona. And by the way, if you missed that Frankie Muniz interview, it will be up on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Loads of stories this offseason. Racing is going on, though, too. The 37th annual Chili Bowl went down in Tulsa this weekend. 365 entries racing through the alphabet soup to showcase the top 24 drivers on the week with Logan Seavey, who you just heard from this hour, crushing the back end of the week, winning the Friday prelim, then winning the pole shuffle, then the overall in the wee hours of, well, last night for some of you, just this morning for the rest of us. Supercross in Oakland was canceled because of the weather up in Southern California. So many riders made their way to the arena cross event in Prescott, Arizona. A main one went to Kyle Peters with Cade Clayson and Austin Pulatelli rounding out the podium. A main two won by Mitchell Harrison, Robbie Wageman and Austin Pulatelli standing on the two and three boxes in the second main. Now Mexico city hosted the first race of the formula E gen three era. And speaking of Andretti, it was Jake Dennis with the Andretti team taking the season opening win over Pascal Werland and Lucas Degrassi, both names that we heard a lot from last year. Oh, yeah. The Dakar rally wrapped up after two weeks in Saudi Arabia and the script, it's been fairly similar over the last several years, even though this time on more arguably more brutal and differing landscape. No one had much at all for Nasser Alatia throughout Alatia just wrapped up his fifth Dakar rally title. So hell, what, what, what class is he in? He's overall. He's, overall, he's right? The big Kahuna class, you know. Statman, what is the official name for the top class? T one. Oh well, they've changed it then. Yeah, they change it about every fifteen minutes. The T stands for <laughs> testicles. They have top testicle. Yeah. Finish testicle one. Testicle like, you gotta one have a, you class. Got, listen. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a big set to roll 
to win that son of a bitch. How did, oh, and he's how done did, it five how did Loeb times. do it? How did Loeb do? Loeb was next. he was next. Yeah, yeah. But he still that didn't really bastard. have. How many stages did Loeb win? I think five or six in a row. He he controlled the second week. Yeah, I was gonna say he was coming in at the end. That yeah, yeah. Okay, so Richie, I see the break coming up in about a minute. Go ahead. Crack no, it. no, I'm done. I'm done. I was gonna get into a topic, but if we got to go to break, we could talk about Andretti Global next segment. Yeah, we. Like I said, man, we could go on for about four hours, but there there'd be about two hours where I'd be falling asleep, dreaming about reeling out that big ass dirt booger that i have in my nose right now slug slug mm -hmm. dig this real quick i saw this how many times have we said real quick tonight now you really got to be i quick. can get a ticket to the freaking cowboy bucks game for 247 dollars. <gasps> well are you way 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 up high? so what that's still Who worth cares, it man? yeah I, that's good. There's, we're two, talking the night before yeah i can huh. on the 50 yard line in the upper deck for 265 if that was at Cowboy what? Stadium, what the hell's going on, Buccaneers fans? Is it going to rain? <laughs> the rest of the country? You know. Wow. Epic. All right, Freak Nation, more freaks coming up. Motorsports Radio, redefined. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab a some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? <laughs> yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you gotta share. Awesome! Lucas works. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Brought to you in part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Our team is on the Rubicon Trail today, running over 125 vehicles over one of the toughest trails in the world. With all the different modifications people can make for their Jeep 4x4, the only product that touches the ground is a tire. This is the team that you want testing your product. I've been off-roading for 30 years now, and you, you definitely don't need anything bigger than 37-inch tires. Our founder, Mark Smith, drove from the tip of South America to the tip of North America on 31-inch tires. The General Tire X-Series meets our standards. We have the ability for accelerated testing in all conditions. Mud, rock, dirt. We're out here this week highlighting the capability of the General Grabber X3 to see how this tire can perform in unbelievable conditions. It's incredible to watch General Tire deliver in this terrain. General Tire delivers me to a fishing tournament, the outdoors, jeeping, whatever it is that you want to do. It's outdoor life is what it is.
Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. Mav TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on Mav TV, Motorsports Network. You are listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. Freak Nation, you miss any of the show, go to the website. We'll have it up there for you tomorrow morning, speedfreaks.tv. And, of course, on YouTube, Facebook Live, whether it's Mav TV, Lucas Oil, our Facebook page, WWT Raceways Facebook page, it's there for you to go back and watch some of this fantastic 2023 extravaganza. Frankie Munez joined us in the first hour for a couple of segments. Earlier this hour, Logan Seavey joining us here in the Freak Nation. Stat man, I keep wanting to say Tom Seavey. Ver, Tom Seavey, but Logan Seavey joins us here in the Freak Nation. You can't get out of Texas, can you? Mm -mm. No. Tom Seaver, you think I'm, Nolan Ryan? What do you, what do you think I'm thinking of? Tom, Tom Seaver is from Texas. Is he? Yeah. Well, hell, I didn't know that. What the hell's he doing playing? The Texan up, up? didn't know that? No, the Northeast. What the hell's he doing? Come on, man. I mean, Nolan Ryan, man. Nobody beats Nolan Ryan. All right. Hey, hey look. Uh, a couple of things I want to hit. We kind of teased it earlier. Well, let's get to this Andretti story in Formula One. But real quick, Suave, we have a poll out there. When Kyle Larson announced that he's going to be oh. running the 2036 Indy 500. <laughs> oh, 11 years off. Uh, he's going to be running the 2024 <laughs> Indy 500. Uh, we put a poll out there asking of the – well, frankly, if, if you're going to go with a NASCAR driver to – run the Indy 500, would it be Kurt Busch, who ran and ran well, Jimmy Johnson, who ran the Indy 500, or Kyle Larson, who hopefully will be running the 500 in 2024, Richie? Yes, and the reason why we came up with those three names is, number one, all three of them are NASCAR Cup Series champions, and number two, they are either active in the NASCAR Cup Series and or just retired. Uh, Tony Stewart, long since retired from the NASCAR Cup Series, so we did not put him on the list. I have a feeling he probably would have been the number one pick among many people. Juan Pablo Montoya also comes to mind. Uh, he hasn't been around in the Cup Series for many years. So, Bush, Johnson, Larson are our three choices, and Kyle Larson is running away with the poll right now. 65.9% of the vote. At Speed Freaks on Twitter. I don't know, Kurt Busch, the way he ran the 500 he crasher was, he was, good. was bonkers. He was solid. What he finished that, was it fifth? Sixth. Sixth? Oh, yeah. He was just solid. He, but he was so he was laser-focused, yet figured out a way to be laser-focused and still kind of be relaxed a bit and kind of enjoy the moment. He just, man, dude. Yeah, he was running the top five most of the race. Yep. Yep, he was on it. Could you say? Uh, he's on it. I'm, not, I'm just trying to think of a comparison. Like having a major league baseball player go over to you know the professional cricket league and having a damn good match or listen, I'm just <laughs> this is more apples to apples than that is. Yeah, I know it is. I'm just trying to make a comparison. Go to NFL football and go play rugby or Deion Sanders doing the double back in the day when he played for the Falcons and the Braves on the same day. Yep. Bo Jackson doubles. Doing mm -hmm. the same, Bo Jackson running up side the wall, <laughs> <laughs> breaking a bat over his knee. Yeah, there you uh, go. 
All right. So what's the story that we're hearing in regards to Andretti? If I listen to, I got Statman in my left ear and Crasher in the other ear. It sounds as discombobulated. Is it, is it as discombobulated <laughs> as it sounds? Well, Michael Andretti has been pursuing an F1 team for several years. I believe this is a dream of Michael himself, not just something that Mario wants Michael to do. I, I truly believe this is a passion of Michael's mm -hmm. and it's, it's been going on for a while. Last year, he uh, made it public that he wanted to go in with this and purchase Sauber. He was met with a ton of opposition from Formula One owners who I believe they originally started saying that he would dilute their prize money because it would no longer be 10 teams. It would be 11. So they wouldn't make as much money, whatever. He decided, okay, fine. All of your, all of your, all of the objections they were bringing about an American team and, or just Andretti himself coming in as a team, they were stiff armed by Michael himself announcing a partnership with Cadillac and general motors to combine forces to form their own team together, not going to buy an existing team. And it was actually supported by FIA's president, Statman, you're going to have to help me with this pronunciation, Mohammed Ben Solayam. That's close enough. Yeah. All right, fine. He supports it, but it's still going to the F1 owners who are just kind of making it known that they're not real happy with this. Ha however, what was it? Total Wolf. Some of them are starting to come out now and say that they are supporting it. So, yeah, Statman, fill in the gaps here as to the who's on one side, who's on the other. Well, the ma the major th the major issue I see is that uh, I don't think Cadillac is really serious about this. This is all coming from Michael, and uh, wh whatever money, uh, venture capital money, whatever he has, I don't see Cadillac. If Cadillac was getting into Formula E, that would be one thing, but Cadillac. Their uh, CEO is saying they're all about uh, getting ready for this electrification world. Mm -hmm. And to go into Formula One doesn't make sense. GM doesn't need exposure uh, globally. And I don't know that Gen General Motors needs to uh, back someone who has no experience in the uh, Formula One. If they wanted to be in Formula One, they just go buy a team. Uh, you know, they're not going to build an engine. They're not going to spend the money to do all that's necessary to uh, be in Formula One, build a chassis, get an engine. Even if, you know, GM is GM's ego such that they're going to put their name on somebody else's engine. I don't think no, so. So uh, none, of, none of this makes any sense. Uh, as If you were GM, their number one market, besides China is here in the United States and the people, the, the government of the United States is telling them you're going to have to uh, build electric cars uh, within the next 10 or 15 years. So selling yourself in formula one to me just doesn't make sense. When you start seeing releases coming from Detroit or wherever Cadillac is based these days, uh, <laughs> then you'll understand that this is serious business and, and especially if the team becomes Cadillac Andretti instead of Andretti Cadillac, uh, then you'll know GM is serious. So Michael is pushing this as Michael Andretti talking about an all-American team backed by an automotive giant, talking about General Motors, with an American driver. And he thinks it should be an attractive opportunity for Formula One and is pushing back on the owners saying all they want to think about is money. They think they're going to get diluted one-tenth of their prize money, but they also get greedy thinking that we'll come in as a new team and take all the American sponsors as well. Now, if, if G again, if GM is going to get a lot of publicity behind this for the next couple of years, as long as this is bubbling around, they could get more publicity out of the deal if by getting involved in the Las Vegas race and people would be talking about him for a year even before they would be online on the grid in a Formula One race. Uh, there, there's too much money, even with the, uh, the, the scaled down uh, cost caps that they have, on, what, $140 million, $135 million. Uh, it, none of this makes uh, economic sense to, Cat to GM uh, and Cadillac. GM already is involved globally as a brand, through um, 
the GTP cars, the Cadillac, and it's going to be racing in the World in, uh, Endurance Championship, uh, the sports cars, and Corvette that's racing at IMSA and Le Mans. Uh, to be inv- I, I don't care what Michael wants to do. Uh, Michael is, is probably not going to get involved in uh, Formula One, and they could use the excuse that they're uh, uh, – Vent, uh, cutting the money into smaller pieces. He's going to, whoever comes in, if anybody does come in, they're going to put enough money into the program to ease that burden a little bit. I just don't see Cadillac gaining anything out of uh, being involved in Formula One, whether it's for themselves or Michael Andretti or the Speed Freaks. Well, you bring up money. Are you saying that the season cap is 140 million per team? Yeah, I think it's 100 that is, 540, yeah. That is cheaper than if Michael even wants to have a team, he has to pay 200 million just to enter the series. Yeah. So, and that's, they're, yeah they're, he's buying his way in and they're getting a replacement on some of that money. None of this makes sense. Hmm. You have a valid point. If you want to spend $100 million, just do it in the Vegas race the end of this year, and you will get, let that go far. Huh. All right, Freak Nation, it's been a fun first show, first live, full live show for 2023. Statman, Crash Gladys, Kenny Sargent, Richard C. Suave here in the Freak Nation. We'll do it again next week. Miss any of the show, go to the website, speedfreaks.tv. Also, the video. It's up on all of our Facebook pages, including Mav TV, Lucas Oil, and uh, WWT Raceway. Shoot the juice to the moose to stat, man. Got it loose. Yeah. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Hey, Dad, what are you going to buy at the store today? Uh, I'm out of Lucas Oil fuel treatment, so let's jump in here and grab a some. Well, do they have the Lucas Oil parts cleaner and degreaser? I bet they do. Well, how about the Lucas Oil power steering fluid? You know, they'll have that too. Even the Octane booster? I won't be surprised if they do. My favorite red and tacky grease? (laughs) Yes, they will, babe. Dad, when we're done, can we grab some candy? Deal, but you gotta share. Awesome! Lucas works. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-296-1251. 800-296-1251. That's 800-296-1251. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. The biggest racing series in America is coming to your town. It's time to mark your calendar. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. The Enjoy Illinois 300, presented by Ticket Smarter. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Don't be on the outside looking in. Get your tickets now at www.raceway.com. Watching part by the Office of Illinois Tourism and Illinois South Tourism. Our team is on the Rubicon Trail today, running over 125 vehicles over one of the toughest trails in the world. With all the different modifications people can make for their Jeep 4x4, the only product that touches the ground is a tire. This is the team that you want testing your product. I've been off-roading for 30 years now, and you you definitely don't need anything bigger than 37-inch tires. Our founder, Mark Smith, drove from the tip of South America to the tip of North America on 31-inch tires. The General Tire X-Series meets our standards. We have the ability for accelerated testing in all conditions. Mud, rock, dirt. We're out here this week highlighting the capability of the General Grabber X3 to see how this tire can perform in unbelievable conditions. It's incredible to watch General Tire deliver in this terrain. General Tire delivers me to a fishing tournament, the outdoors, jeeping, whatever it is that you want to do. It's outdoor life is what it is.
time is more valuable today, there's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. Back in the day, you guys did everything you could with what you had. Yeah. So we thought it would be more fun to uh, take everything we have today and put everything you had over top of it. How about that? Wow. Mav TV presents Legacy of Speed. This is the story of the cars, the men who built them, and the men who raced them. This is their Legacy of Speed on Mav TV, Motorsports Network. You are listening to Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined.